Hello guys, I'm going to take a bit of a break from the farm and plant machinery this week and what I'm going to do is take this radio controlled car apart and uh, see how easy it would be for us to convert it into a robot. I'm sure it's going to be pretty simple, uh, I doubt there's much, there might be two pretty large gearboxes and then a circuit board in the middle. So all we really need to do is get rid of the circuit board and put in our own. So first things first, let's take it apart. You would have seen in a review video that we have a little 4.8 volt battery in this uh, RC car so that's pretty ideal for what we want. We usually want around about 5 volts for our Arduinos or even the ultrasonic sensor I'd imagine is for 5 volt uh, rail or well it expects to get ground on 5 volts whereas the radio modules might expect 3.3 uh, volts and stuff like that but we'll just have to add a 3.3 volt regulator that's not too big of a deal. So. So what I'll probably do is keep the battery and keep the on off switch and uh, obviously I'll be keeping the motors. So let's continue with our disassembly. Okay so when we take the side panel off the little RC car here we can see how our wheel is geared in there. That's quite a strong looking gear there. So I don't think we'd have any problems with that. It looks pretty good. Uh, the casing of the gearbox looks pretty good so far. But uh, we'll have to take the other side off and get a proper look in. Okay, so once you get the two sides off and the wheels out of the way, you can pull the model apart. And as you'd expect, we have the two uh, toy RC car motors. It's not surprising at all, obviously. This car has a very strange antenna. They have the point here marked antenna with just a normal wire coming out of it and going to this patch of copper here. Uh, Maybe they were trying to make a patch antenna, but uh, I don't really know. Or maybe they were trying to match this piece of wire to, to be the antenna. It's very, very hard to tell what they were trying to do there. Because, uh, once you push it down, this little bit of wire is all bundled up. So it's not like it's a proper antenna. Really what they should have done was drill a hole through here and stick an antenna out that could flex when the car rolled over. That's what I would have done and had a had it just straight up and you get a perfect pattern so I don't know what they were hoping to achieve with that it's very strange but it, it works well it, it probably wouldn't have had a huge range I, I didn't test out its range but uh, you know it's not the kind of uh, vehicle that you'd drive for you know a couple of hundred meters away from you you're going to be standing pretty close to it so they don't really need a very good antenna so Probably they didn't worry about it. It's just I've never seen that like that before. It's very strange. Kind of like they were trying to make a, a really crude top hat monopole or something. We obviously have our two LEDs in here to just light up this little section. That's nothing special there. We can we can add those back in ourselves if we want. And just our normal little PCB here. So there's nothing special about the model as we'd expect. So let's get rid of the PCB. Okay, so in the bottom of our model, we obviously have our space for our battery pack, our battery wires coming up, and that leaves us with the ground and the switch. So what I'll do there is I'll put a DuPont connector on there, so I can just plug that straight into a header on the other side of the model. On this part of the model, or this part of the robot, I suppose I should call it, since uh, that's what we're going to do. I think I'll put a little board in there somewhere. Probably cut it so that I can screw it into this. Uh, screw hole here that's holding on the green thing that'll also cover the LEDs a little bit maybe help to brighten them out so I'll include those on the the uh, Arduino controls as well then I think what I'll do is drill a hole in the top here mount a 4x2 uh, header on this PCB so that when I screw it in it'll stick up through here and then I can just plug in a DuPont connector or plug in a long range one or just a low power one if I want. I can change it basically is what I'm thinking. So that would be good for that. And then I can arrange my uh, my Arduino and my motor driver around that. Should make things pretty simple that way I think. Well I've drilled a hole. It's not very pretty but it's going to do the job uh, here in the top of the RC car. So that's going to let the socket for our NRF24 radio module fit through. Here's the little PCV. I drilled a hole out to, to fit over there and a hole to mount it here using this existing hole. The screw that was in the hole just kind of 
fell out and took most of the plastic with it so it was probably over tightened in the factory but uh, you get that kind of thing a lot with these kind of uh, toy cheap toy RC cars and RC models because they usually just screw these things up with little electric screwdrivers and they don't really uh, torque it up properly so you'd feel the screw getting tight with your hand if you were doing it by hand but with the electric screwdriver you just screw too tight unless it's a very expensive uh, electric screwdriver which is highly unlikely for a toy RC car manufacturing process but anyway uh, the point is this socket for our NRF24 radio module is going to fit through here something like this we'll have our socket there and we'll be able to put the header for all our other components facing up the ways so you can see that the copper is on the bottom here and I've put the legs of the socket up through the PCB and uh, or through the perf board and bent the legs over soldered some uh, well some old legs off some components to them and then put them through here soldered them to fix that in place so that's uh, working okay for us now and we'll be able to solder the rest of our components on to well we'll solder the sockets through and be able to plug in our components as we want them to this side I'll screw this in place and then show you where the NRF would hopefully be sticking out of the model so there's our PCB screwed in place you can see there's going to be plenty of space here for our uh, microcontroller say dual motor driver uh, we'll put in a, uh, an accelerometer to tell us when we're upside down or not then on this side we have our socket for our radio I can't find one of the smaller modules so you'll just have to imagine this is the smaller module with the little uh, PCB printed inverted F antenna on it so we won't have this big long antenna obviously because it would hit the wheels but you would just simply plug in the radio module like this and then our antenna would be out this way and we should get a pretty good radiation pattern from it I wonder if you were to fold down this antenna you might actually get away with this large antenna but I uh, don't think there's much point we don't really have the or need the range that we would get from an antenna like this because uh, well we're not going to be too far away from this model because we wouldn't be able to see it so that's all I have time for today in the next video I'll hopefully get the microcontroller installed get the motor driver installed and with any luck the ultrasonic distance or range finder as well that would mean that we'd be able to upload a little program and just let this robot kind of drive around slowly and try to avoid some obstacles very simple just drive up to an obstacle once it's detected uh, maybe turn left turn right until there's a clear path and drive away that would be the very basic sort of robot so with any luck we'll be able to do that in the next video so if you like this uh, series make sure and hit the like button and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions let me know below the video or you can head on over to the forum and I'm pretty sure that's everything for today, so thanks very much for watching.